So minutes after Liam Byrne was sentenced to five years, his first uh, jail term that he served in more than two decades, his son tweeted, get in there, or sorry, put on Instagram, Instagram, get in there, I love you, Dad, see you soon. Obviously mm. delighted um, with the jail term his father has faced. Um, it, it, it maybe is, does seem quite small. It does, I suppose, but I mean, in a way, this was all about Bobber Kavanagh directing this operation and um, he gets the heftier term while recognising he's on a big, long sentence. We'll, we'll come on to the exact sentencing now. It's quite complicated, but we'll come on to it a bit. But from what I can see, Kavanagh gets an extra three years on top of what he's serving, the 21. Um, you know, he'll be out on licence at some point. So it just brings his total jail term to... 24 years, essentially, which is hefty. Yeah, it's a long, a long one. Um, yeah, so it's for two different. And and in actual fact, uh, when the court started, uh, Judge Katz began by directly speaking to Thomas Kavanagh, who was on a screen, by the way. They didn't come to court this morning. None of them, they were, uh, they came in remotely into the courtroom and which made things a little bit less hassily there this morning there wasn't the security there was a lot of security actually still but not as bad as yesterday um but he started by directly speaking to Thomas Kavanagh he said you Thomas Kavanagh were involved in a large uh importation of cocaine into the UK and that was Operation Hornstay which he was jailed for that 21 years for um he said to him you were arrested for those offences. And in January of 2019, um, the house was searched, I think, and they found this pink stun gun. So on the 2nd of September 2019, he was jailed for the unrelated firearms offences, which is that pink stun gun that was found. Um, So they said that he had a previously suspended sentence for fraud activity, which was also reactivated at that time. Anyway, Operation Hornstay, the investigation sort of went on. And at that point, he approached the NCA, the National Crime Agency, with information about firearms. And all the while was sort of delaying Hornstay through the courts because um, he was he took out a Newton hearing and he was sort of holding back on his 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 guilty plea, etc., um, they talk about how there was this Encro chat hack in April of 2020 and the conspiracy was sort of discovered on that hack as they talked about getting weapons and um, they talked about how they were going to source them and dump them in order for Kavanaugh to approach the NCA, hand up these weapons, say that he'd heard that they had been dumped in a field in Newry and hoping to get his sentence reduced so that becomes a separate criminal investigation and it's called Operation Briard or something they called it. Um, I'm sure the NCA will release some details around this later on in the day or this yeah, they've, week. They've sent out a press release now with a bit of bit of extra detail, um, including like a, a couple of comments on, on the case. Um, yeah. And, you know, they say that uh, they, orchest- they say Thomas Kavanagh, Sean Kent and Neem Byrne orchestrated a cynical and dangerous plot to plant a cache of weapons so Kavanaugh could direct the NCA to them and reduce his time in prison. And so, like, they just, they go on to it, basically, yeah. again. I mean, it's amazing he was, you know, very, very quickly hatching this plot uh, because, I mean, there was no, at that stage, he, you know, he was still fighting it in the courts, I suppose, wasn't he? Yeah, and he's facing a very lengthy sentence. Um, so... You know, the sort of the criminal world would 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 say he wasn't feeling able to do his time, Omar Kavanaugh, you know, for I suppose the the height he'd got to in a criminal organization, he was really running the show in the UK for the Kinnahans. And um, you know, there is a sense of manliness that goes on in criminal organizations that you have to be able to do your time. And he didn't seem to want to do it. He he just obviously doesn't do prison easily, although I do believe he's a model prisoner. Um, Encro was dismantled in June 2020, but the conspiracy, the judge said, didn't end there. Um, so he pleads guilty to Hornstay in July of 2020, and then he launches this Newton hearing. 
this is in the run up to his sentencing. The Newton hearing was a kind of legal battle as regards how guilty he was. Um, he had, so that's coming up, the Newton hearing in February 2021. And the 22nd of December 2020, so you reverse a couple of months, he, his solicitor contacts the NCA for the second time to say that he wants to impart information about weapons. Um, on the 24th of December, 2020, Christmas Eve, um, they furnished the NCA with, they say they have, they have no knowledge of an existing cache of firearms. Now, the NCA are reluctant to sort of deal with him because the Hornstay is still going through the courts. They haven't got to sentencing. When he's pleaded guilty, he's pleaded guilty, albeit he's trying to, you know, downgrade his guilt. Yeah, this is the great contradiction because... Although the criminals think that the police operate this way with, you know, a nod and a wink and a, you do, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And mm. maybe they, they have done in the past at times. In modern policing, like they hate that stuff, don't they? The, the, mm-hmm. the, the guards or the police, when they're confronted with that, they just don't like it because it's, it's really career ending risk, isn't it? With that sort yeah. of stuff. If, you know, there's more police get in trouble for the nod and a wink, but they're not corrupt but they're they're you know cutting those corners it's become such a uh, an anathema to modern policing i think so and yet the nca are in a position where somebody of a serious criminal you know ilk is saying that he knows where there's a cache of weapons which are obviously a danger to the public so they do have to kind of speak with them and see what he has to say they're sort of their hands are tied there's obviously public safety issues around these weapons while they may be Hidden somewhere, they could still be attained and used at any point. In fact, you sort of saw that with Jonathan Dowdle, like when the when he was offering to to go witness in the during the Regency trial. Like the guards are, they don't like it because they can get no. they can, you know, they have to deal with it because you know certainly in the, this case there's as you said a load of weapons, so that has to be dealt with. There's knowledge of this and they have to pursue it, but they don't want yeah. to get sucked into something that comes back to haunt them. Um, exactly, but the criminals yeah. never see it like that. I don't think they they no. they they see it. Well, like they it. always think they can outsmart everybody, don't they? And they can they know how to work the system. I mean, that's another thing they are. Many of them are very proud of the fact they can work the system. They can beat the system as such. Um, so they they do come to the table with them in the on the nineteenth of April, twenty twenty one. He's in Donegate Prison at this point, and he says to them that um, there is weapons, ten or twenty weapons, firearms that he knows of. He's heard this fifteen or sixteen months ago. And he's heard that these weapons have been moved into Northern Ireland from Holland um, by the 19th of May 2021. So this is just a month later. His solicitor emails to the NCA a map marked with an X and instructions of exactly where these weapons are. Um, So he is the next day, the police will go out with metal detectors and they find under the surface of the earth two hold holdovers containing and maybe now there's 11 weapons you might have the detail there from the nca i've just scribbled this down but we know anyway what there is there's certainly three scorpions three heckler cocks there's three submachine guns and one uzi there's live ammo for all of them yeah they have a pk1 submachine gun and then obviously a lot of magazines containing ammunition as well are they've put out pictures of it yeah a scorpion magazine a retail box with cartridges a DC-9 submachine gun, a submachine gun Type 2, a Heckler, and Cock P-30 with magazine and ammunition. Yeah, so they've, they've put out pictures of it. Yeah. Like some of them look uh, more modern than others, to be honest. There's a couple there that look yeah. like they've seen better days, but obviously... The, so, Is there one with 48 on it or something? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a... It's a pity you don't have Eamon on, who's, who's a, a sort of a... I was talking to a weapon expert I know this morning who said that one of them has got the name of it as something 48 or something and it's actually that relates to the date it was made. So it's like a weapon from the war times. Oh, look, there's one of them there. It's <laughs> described here as a VS58V drum magazine, a magazine shell. And it looks, yeah, it looks like it's the first ever shotgun ever made nearly, you know. Yeah. See how they're still running around. But apparently some of these, uh, they were all active, but some of them had been deactivated and reactivated. Um, so they were all ready to, to go, really, with the ammo with them. Yeah. Um, so that's 
that was the kind of the background to it. Um, the sentencing for those weapons is five to 10 years maximum. Okay. Yeah. So. Which is similar to what would be in this country, I think. Go back to Kavanaugh now and he's in prison. He's pleaded guilty. His Newton hearing is over and he's sentenced on March the 28th, 2022. And he gets his 21 years in prison in relation to this drug drug plot that he's been bringing all the drugs into the UK, cocaine through Belgium. That was an extremely intricate uh, investigation. So he gets that and he appeals it. And the, re- the appeal is rejected, but the, the judges do acknowledge that the sentence is severe. Then we, we move on to this case. And the jury were sworn in this case on September 2024. And um, they then sort of regathered and it was decided that they were going to plead guilty. You know, we reported on that. It was a last minute guilty plea. So... The, the judge sort of acknowledges that, that, you know, that that wasn't the earliest they could have plead, pledged, but that they there was legitimate legal argument to be gone through. So he's not sort of taking from them because of the lateness of that guilty plea. He sort of accepts that there was issues to be raised um, by their lawyers. So they come on then to sentencing them. And first up is... Bomber having So, look, the sentencing is like a mathematics class, but basically, it comes to Bomber Kavanaugh and he says that he can start with 10 years. And, you know, he's given this credit for his guilty plea. He's given a credit, I suppose, for his ex- lengthy existing sentence, which the appeals judges have acknowledged is sort of harsh. Um, and he starts to work out the sentence. And what he lands on is six years. So it would be concurrent to his his sentences. Now that means it runs alongside it. But what he does say to him is, you'll serve half of that, which puts three years on top of your sentence. So that's slightly complicated because it's it's run it concurrent, is. but it's which yeah. which tends to mean it it you know it runs alongside it. But it's obviously added at a certain point the consecutive sentence would be the, the new sentence would only start when the other one ends, but there's mm-hmm. it's still going to mean more jail time for him. Yeah, well, he's, he directly said to him, you will serve half of that and it'll put three years on top of your sentence. And that's as simply as I can put it, because as I said to you, these are very complex. Now, uh, Sean Kent, who is, he's Liverpoolian, is he this guy? Kent. Sean Kent has got an address in Liverpool. Yeah, he's gotten very yeah. little attention off us, obviously. But yeah. like Liverpool would have been... Um, seen as probably the strongest regional area that the the, the Kinnan cartel were operating in in the UK, and mm. obviously those ties are 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 long standing. I mean, he got he got an extra year, did he? Than than Liam Byrne, so he was obviously regarded as being maybe more culpable. Or, or yes, his is, his again is a little bit complex too, and he seems to have put to the court a lot of sort of. Uh, letters and stuff because the judge recognizes that he has a lot of support from his family and um, that this will be his first time in prison and it, he would be expecting a long sentence for this but he has stated his intention to stop offending sort of once he gets over this now Kent has already been in jail we spoke about a gesture more than a thousand days so he basically gets a six year sentence right and a 12 year because it's various different charges but say He's done six years, okay? So he says to me, you serve half of that, but you've actually already served longer than that. So from my reckoning, Kent has woken out the door of the prison today. He's finished his sentence. He will go presumably out on licence. Yeah, and as we said, it is quite strict, the licence, but yeah, it must be a... You know, it must be a, a nice feeling, I suppose. Yeah. You know, walking out or not to be. Well, yeah. And and that's what I think what he was hoping for. Now, Liam Byrne, um, he was, he addressed Liam Byrne, Justice Katz, and said to him that you went to Spain and you had to be extradited from there. So he, he said that he is getting five years. Now, you see, he was charged with lesser offences because he, couldn't face that conspiracy charge here, which the NCA wanted to charge him with, but they couldn't because they didn't have that charge in Spain. So when he was coming back, the Spanish released him, extradited him, 
but only on the, the weapons charges, not the conspiracy. Yeah, not the perverting the course of justice charge, perverting which, which, justice, which, which exactly. Kavanaugh and Kent both were convicted of. So Lean Byrne is basically conspiracy to to, to possess the weapons um, yes. on those days. Now, they're, they've left quite a few of these charges on file, which they, because they pleaded guilty, they sort of, set aside many of the charges they were putting to them in the courts had they gone to trial. So there was a lot of kind of legal wrangling about what they were leaving on file and they appeared to leave them on file. We've never really, I suppose it just sits there as part of your record, doesn't it? It sits there as part of your, I mean. It can be reactivated at any time, is that it? Well, I think in in in, a, in theory it can, but it, in practice it never is. Um charges are left on the books as they call it over here all the time where mm. you know they're just not proceeded with but you're not you're not found uh not guilty of it either um i don't think i've ever remember a case where something like that is reactivated it's kind of a, a an agreement that it can be taken into consideration if if you're to come before the courts to get it again um mm-hmm. uh, so i mean i think this is the sent- the five year sentence is what he's going to do now, he's also, um, they're all back on the 4th of December. Well, sorry, Byrne and Kavanaugh are back on the 4th of December for a serious crime prevention order. Now, is this the proceeds of crime cases that they take? No, a serious crime prevention order is what they give. Now, it, it, it could well be that that some of the assets, asset seizures can be part of that. But a serious co- crime prevention order is a thing that exists in the UK where it's placed on you. Um, obviously, Liam Byrne has served, you know, he's, he's, you know, he might have another couple of years to go. Yeah, we reckon about two years, do we? About something like on that. On the calculations, yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe, I don't know if it's that. He's done a hundred and something days, maybe 190 days already in prison. And does that include so, time in Spain or? That's what they've, they've, they've counted for the court's purpose of sentencing today. So that is... A little over half a year, yeah. And he gets five, will serve two and a half. And so he's another two-ish to go and then re- released on licence. So this serious crime prevention order is related to that. It's related to that. So, I mean, it's very, very strict conditions. Um, the great example is Curtis Warren. Uh, yes. That's just been convicted of, for breaching that. And some of the reasons he breached that was because he stayed away from an address that he gave for more than a few days. Um, he had two mobile phones. He's only allowed uh, basically a Nokia phone, a non-smartphone. Mm-hmm. He's not allowed to have anything more than two hundred euros in his account. Um, he has to, if he wants to go on holidays, he has to apply to be allowed to go on holidays. Um, other things that they might place upon somebody's head would be that Liam Byrne wouldn't be allowed associated with any known criminals. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so it's very, very strict conditions. Strict. So it's even stricter than the normal license, which it, and, and it involves curfews. It involves. Mm. Um, it can also involve that you have to get a like he's obviously Liam Byrne has said he's a spray painter, so it could be something like mm. you have to work as a spray painter for a certain amount of time every year. Like it's really, really severe. Um, Curtis Warren obviously was a, a Liverpool gangster who rose to the very top, and he was basically. Uh, convicted after he went and saw his, his girlfriend in, you know, away from the address. So it was nothing, there was no suggestion that he was back in the drugs business. But, yeah. you know, we don't have these things over in Ireland, but they're... they're, they're big, it's the police are going to be bl- breathing down your neck while you're out on licence and beyond sometimes serious crime prevention, because they can last a lifetime, can't they? Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, most of them do lapse now. Yeah. Um, certainly with Lean Byrne, it's not going to get a lifelong... Serious, serious but, but Thomas Kavanaugh is a whole other matter. He's a whole other matter. And this is kind of where it gets interesting, you know, of course, obviously the, you know, the sentencing and all that and going over the evidence is interesting. But so they're due in court on the 4th of December and the judge is setting aside half a day for this uh, hearing of this serious crime prevention order. Um, he asked the the lawyers, did the defendants require, you know, would they be required, did they want to come to court basically for that? And he was initially said that from this point, yes, they do. So the judge then started to talk about the amount of security that was required to transport Kavanaugh from the prison, okay? Which would, from what he was saying, 
it was he that was the risk, the threat, the reason that there was so much police presence that it cost, we were told yesterday, 30,000 to transport them from the prison into the courtroom of the Old Bailey. Kavanaugh, you can only conclude, must be under threat. There must be information that there is an active and live threat against him. And Liam Byrne wasn't mentioned as being part of that, even though he, he was going along with the car, if you know what I mean, or in the van. But he didn't seem to be the one that the security concerns were around. It was bomber. Yeah, I mean, the other reason that they have high security bringing prisoners to, 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 to jail is if they fear there's going to be somebody trying to help them escape. Um, mm. You know, so we've seen that in Ireland at times when we had those uh, those Dutch guys who were associated with, mm. with, with Rido and Taji <clears throat> being brought to prison. They were brought under really, really high security and not because they were under threat, because they feared somebody would try and uh, help them escape. Well, they actually had evidence at that stage, or certainly they had intelligence that it was Mr. Couscous, uh, Noafal Fassi, who was in prison in Port Leash, having been arrested in the Kinahan safe house. He was wanted in the Netherlands. And there was intelligence to say that El Rico, the Chilean, had actually hatched a plot to escape him from Port Leash prison that was taken so seriously that the Dutch military flew into Ireland to bring him back to the Netherlands. Yeah, I mean, it sounds so outlandish, but of course it has happened, in, hasn't it, in Holland? And most recently there was that guy in France who was, who a helicopter was used, that, that gangland criminal to escape him. His name escapes me at the moment. So well, there was a case here in, in the UK, in London, um, a year ago that they were just talking about outside the court, a couple of people who were kind of going into the public gallery, were just chatting and this guy had got out of Wandsworth clinging underneath the truck. Um, So anyway. Bomber might be a little bit old for that one, but. He might be a little bit large to cling to a truck. He's a big guy, Bomber, you know. Um, So yeah, and he was, you know, they were all on screen in front of us. Certainly Liam Byrne looked comfortable, I would have thought. Um, Bomber was making, you know, gestures and I'd say he wasn't happy but he never seems to be happy with any porridge he has to do does he you know that is really why why we're here because he did try his damnedest to um you know to get a couple of years shaved off his other sentence but um so that was kind of where it was left I mean obviously the 4th of December to see what the UK are going to suggest and the courts obviously have to sanction these orders. What are they going to put on them on release? Maybe. I mean, it'd be it'd be also interesting to see if either of them uh, seek to be repatriated to Ireland, which is very, very standard, really. Um, maybe not at the start of, of, of somebody's sentence, but between Ireland and England, if you're an Irish guy jailed in England, you can apply to serve your sentence in Ireland, and most of them do. Vice versa, a lot of English people who end up, you know, convicted here will seek to go Ooh. home. Um there's never been any talk of that or attempt for that to happen. Uh, so I suppose it, it's 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 still unlikely, but maybe they are safer and more comfortable over in the UK, despite the, you know, some of the claims made that they were under, under risk, but certainly Lean Byrne. Well, I think the two families are also very settled in Birmingham, you know. I mean, Bomber has lived there for decades now at this stage, I think since the early 2000s. Um, family are all settled and Liam Byrne of course moved to Tamworth around 2018 um, and was based near Kavanaugh as well and I think other members of the gang were living in, in the Tamworth area as well so um, it might be more it might be easier for them to stay here actually at this stage than I think it probably would um, bearing in mind of course Liam Byrne lost his house in Ireland to the Criminal Assets Bureau and maybe doesn't have, you know, his family don't have a home in, in Ireland at this stage. Yeah, and also, you know, there's, there's although the, the feud has certainly died down and the, the, the level of, of risk is lower, um, coming back to Ireland would still pose a significant risk for him, even within the prison system. Um, mm -hmm. He would be a, be a whole other matter. Um, yeah, so I'd say they'll, they'll serve there. Are they, they're both in... in Prison together. They're in Belmarsh at the moment, but they talked about if they have to come back 
to court for the 4th of December. The lawyers want to talk to them about that. Will they come on remotely? It might be easier. And obviously the judge has made comments about the cost to the state. And uh, obviously, sorry, by the way, the cost that they saved the state in the trial costs. And I mean, that seemed to have been absolutely eye-watering what that was going to cost because of the the, the security risk around them. But um, that was kind of, you know, put in their favour that they, they for their guilty plea because of the cost as well. But um, there was some suggestion that Liam Byrne like, would Liam Byrne be category A prisoner, Bell Marsh, with a five-year sentence? I, I don't think he would. No, I mean, I look, I mean, it, we, again, we're not, we don't necessarily know how it works in, in the prison system in the UK, but they certainly, like in Ireland, they have, they put, it's not just determined by the length of, of, of sentence somebody is serving or for the offence that they're serving it, they will use intelligence to mm. to put people in, you know, in a high category if they think they're at risk of, for example. And we know that this happened in this case, Thomas Bomber, Bomber Kavanagh, despite being behind bars, engaged in this criminal enterprise at the very least. So, mm. like, that's the ter- that's taken into account when you have prisoners. And obviously then in Port Leash Prison in Ireland, they'll put people in there even if they're only serving road traffic offences, for example. Marlow Highland famously was in there for, I think it was road traffic offences, but he was in the highest category of, 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 you know, prisoner uh, in Port Leach. So they will, like Liam Byrne is being kept there for a reason. um, And it is... Yeah, his brother, his brother James Byrne was there again today to see the sentencing. Um, Obviously the defendants weren't in court, but he was there with another associate. And... um, Bomber Kavanagh's, two of Bomber Kavanagh's sons were also present. A huge uh, police presence, both overt and covert, around the court. Um, And, you know, look, it's extraordinary to see that they finally have made it in criminal terms here in the UK. After so long, they seem to be just a blip in the ocean here. But they've really taken, the NCA have really taken them apart. Yeah, and I mean, Liam Byrne, like, of course, it was taken into consideration that his, his like, his last conviction is, was it said 1998 or? It was, that was reported to the court, but the judge didn't take it into consideration for its sentencing. Um, Bomber Kavanagh's previous convictions were taken into account, but not Liam Byrne's because it was so long ago. And because of the evidence he presumably gave to the court that he was 17 at the time, yeah, I mean, um, it is extraordinary um, how, how you know, he managed to stay out of prison all that time. Mm. And the reason he stayed out of prison all that time is because he reached a certain level and he had the contacts to reach a certain level. So mm. we, he never had to be in the presence of drug shipments or guns or anything like that. Um, it was all done uh, through other people. And again, all of these guys have been brought low by EncroChat. It's the Mm. digital evidence that is putting each and every one of these major criminals who took that basic step many, many years ago to decide, I will never be physically there when these things are happening. And that was such a great protection for them for so long. But technology has been their undoing and Liam Byrne, you know, over two decades out, out, uh, a free man and for all of those two decades, a constant target for police forces, uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's text messages of that of that were that yeah. got them done in eventually. Got them done in eventually, yeah. So that's it from here. Um, yeah, you're coming back to we're awaiting. I, I'm not fully sure when the general election is about to be called or is mm-hmm. signaled that it's going to be called or people are going to know. But certainly in the newsroom upstairs, uh, where we, we we share a newsroom with uh, the Irish Independent, they're all getting worked up. Um, us humble peasants in the Sunday world aren't fully sure, but they, no. you know that general election yeah. moment is certainly yeah. coming soon. So we'll you'll go from uh, the burn organised crime group getting a nail in the coffin, and you'll come back to a general election where. And tell me this much: has there been any update on McGovern? There's, there's been. I mean, um, obviously, Helen McEntee was was over there and signed that treaty. Um, there were statements released by uh, by obviously the Irish government and the the Emiratis, um, 
but there's been no update. And if you remember any of those, like when, when Lean Burn was in court, there was local freelancers out there covering it, you know, being told he's back up in court at this stage and we'd follow it and get a bit of copy. None of that will happen from Dubai. I mean, anything no. that happens is absolutely mysterious. And yeah, yeah. So there's just, there is no update. I mean, maybe the government are getting them, but I wouldn't even be 100% sure of that. Uh, certainly reporters aren't going to be. And yeah. I think when, if if and when McGovern is put on a plane, that's the next update you'll get, isn't it? Yeah, I think so too. You certainly won't hear details of his... It's against, against extradition or anything like, like that. that. No. So it's all, it's, it's, but yeah, you could be a general election where Sean McGovern is, you know, Liam Byrne is in prison, Bomber Cavanagh is in prison, Sean McGovern is in, in theory in an Irish prison, and Jerry Hutch is being elected to the doll. I mean, it's what a, what a, funny, what a funny little country, I suppose. What a, what a mad country, right? We're going to talk about that one next. So I'll, I'll see you for the moment. Okay. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.